тому, что мистер Надер Bonjour again to everybody. I'll try as much as possible to be brief because iftar in the way is in less than 45 minutes. So uh, for those fasting, I don't want to be the last thing they see before fasting. I want to give them some time to breathe before going to eat. Um, just a, a little um, background uh, in, in less than a minute about myself. I manage a company called Wakira uh, Investments. I founded it in 2016. It's fully owned by an Egyptian and a Saudi family, I'm sorry. And um, Wakira was founded to acquire restaurant businesses, to operate them and to grow them in the UAE first and then beyond the UAE. So far, we have acquired uh, several brands. Now, uh, we had to go through 200 plus uh, exercises of exploring and even due diligence at some cases before we acquire our current brands. And our current brands are Kulcha King, which is a well-known Indian brand, Indian-inspired brand in the UAE. And then we acquired Nam Nam Asia. Nam Nam Asia is an Asian slash Thai uh, brand. And now it's mainly a delivery-focused brand. And Greco, it's a Greek-inspired brand. We have uh, Rinwa, which is an Arabic uh, slash Egyptian brand. We have Currylicious, a curry brand. Again, it's a dark kitchen. And we have Kinwa Power, a uh, um, healthy food uh, kind of uh, power bowl brand. It's a dark kitchen as well. And last but not least is SDG Catering, and that's our CPU as well as our catering business. So this is just in a nutshell who I am and what I do uh, for the time being. Um, I'll, I'll put you know two chapters to my discussion uh, as requested by Leo. The first chapter, in brief again on what do we do for the reopening. Uh, I'll try not to repeat uh, what uh, Akshay uh, has said, just to be more uh, efficient. Uh, the few points that we are doing that were probably uh, not stressed uh, as much uh, by Akshay, and maybe it's more relevant to our type of business. Uh, the first one would be on how we market. If you're going to reopening, you have to have a, a serious plan on how you tell people that you're reopening. Now, we are one of these brands or one of these groups who decided to stay closed, completely closed, even for deliveries for two weeks, because we wanted to first understand the environment around us to protect our uh, people and to protect our customers and to do what's right. We took our time, we protected ourselves, we protected our staff and we protected our brands. And when we came back, we came back with a specific marketing plan. And the marketing plan that we're uh, adopting mainly has two aspects to it. The first one is new menu, new items on many of the brands. So we're introducing exciting things, whether it's for dining or for delivery, you would want to fire the app or you would want to uh, explore and, and you're curious about it. That's on uh, one, one side. The other side uh, of, of the new menu and the new additions is to sort of let you come and experience the picture that you're seeing online uh, face to face physically. The second thing that we're doing is everything that has to do with social marketing. In social marketing, we're not only uh, relying on our Facebook, Instagram, or the aggregators. No, we're relying on our own um, social groups, whether it's WhatsApp or others. Now, Easter was just 10 days ago, and for the uh, Orthodox Easter was less than a week ago. Ramadan just started three days ago. These were all opportunities for us to interact with our uh, customer base and say, happy Easter or happy Ramadan, uh, blessed Ramadan, etc. Well, guess what? The way we interact in the groups, we're sending easy to share links for our new menus or for our new uh, advertising campaigns. So that while they you know, reply, they can actually share it within other groups and do us the favor of uh, propagating what we're doing there. So these are two things that we're doing in marketing, new menus plus social marketing. We're telling people about what we're doing in sanitization, hygiene, how we took care of our people, how we contributed efficiently to flattening the curve in the UAE, uh, what we're doing you know, to keep our people safe, what we're doing in the restaurants to keep our customers safe. All of that helped us uh, a lot. Now, the last thing that I wanted to um, state uh, that was not mentioned uh, earlier is we are in the hospitality uh, industry. 
hospitality means you have to be happy. You have to be willing to serve the people. You have to be willing to receive the people in your restaurants. Well, let's show it. Unless our own people are happy, taking care of, and they feel that we're close to them, they will not show this to their own people. All the pictures that we're showing on our social media, showing our own staff, these are genuine pictures. We did not ask our staff to smile on purpose. To smile on purpose. They're just going and going and going, you know, and, and showing the pictures with their happy faces and they're happy going back to serving our own customers. And I think this is contagious. If people feel that there is some kind of an energy, positive energy within the group, within the staff, within the restaurant itself, this will uh, pass on to them. So we're doing what we need to do. We're all passing through tough times. We're all having, you know, a lot of challenges that are unprecedented that we need to face. But at the end of the day, we're all happy and smiling. We're all doing what we can to please you, to be hospitable to you, Mr. Customer or Mrs. Customer. So that's just, you know, like my two cents worth of uh, input on the reopening and what we're doing on top of uh, what Akshay has said, which was very exhaustive and, and uh, comprehensive. So thank you, Akshay, for having uh, stepped on that uh, project. Now, the second chapter I, uh, I want to discuss with you uh, is the, um, what I had uh, started discussing last week, um, which was how we can together form uh, an actionable uh, uh, entity that can actually help all those uh, parts of this entity. So I repeat, I understand that we are already 100 brands 381 branches, as Leo said earlier in the poll. We're looking forward to becoming 2,000 restaurants uh, in, in this uh, alliance. And I'm just thinking how we can action this alliance, how we can actually start now surviving the COVID-19 era and then coming out of it even stronger than how we came into it and coming out of it with something that's sustainable, consistent as an entity that's bigger and stronger to serve our customers, but also while being profitable. And this for me is as simple as a paradigm shift. It's unless we go and we completely change the way we are doing business. And as George was saying earlier, challenge every single line of our PNL is one aspect, but the other aspect is what else can we do to serve our customers better and to be able to continue grow or to go back to growth to start with. But first, just pass on the bad news of uh, uh, the COVID-19. Now, I've split it into two ways. Um, the first one is we have some bad news and some good news. The bad news, I think you all know of it. It's, it's already there. The COVID has hit us all. Some of us have lost 50% plus of the revenue. Some of us are uh, uh, suffering with a lot of, uh, uh, you know, problems that they're not used to handling or they're not used to dealing with. Um, we're having uh, uh, deliveries that are hit, got hit a lot because of the uh, corona stay home phobia. People not willing, you know, to risk uh, the riders or risk, you know, the delivery packaging, et cetera, et cetera. We've had a lot of people having pay cuts or being laid off. So people are becoming poorer. So they don't want to run any risks. They would try, you know, to stick to their limited budgets and not to spend on uh, getting food delivered to them. Prices are going down by the day. Unfortunately, uh, restaurants are resorting under pressure to go to huge discounts. They know that people are poorer and thus they're responding by giving extra discounts. So they are becoming poorer as restaurateurs. Um, and at the end of the day, the option of actually delaying payments and uh, you know, over shrinking and firing people, this is not sustainable. This can get you going for a month, maybe two, but it cannot you know, keep you uh, going as a restaurant for the next year or so. The good news, every time there is a crisis, there are winners and there are losers. Those who are going to disappear obviously are losing, but this will be uh, at the, in the advantage and in favor of those staying because the market will become more filtered. The market will become smaller, uh, play, smaller number of players, but for the same cake. Now, landlords and the state, this is a big shock to them. Landlords were used to stating the terms of the game. They were used to uh, naming their price. Now, no. Now they will have to listen because the supply is becoming much more. With more restaurants closing down, this means that there will be more landlord uh, uh, 
with vacancies uh, and, and with uh, areas that are not occupied. So they have to be reasonable to get these occupied. There will be uh, aggregators for the first time since at least we knew them. They started uh, listening. They started, you know, becoming more and more uh, uh, flexible on what and how this can be done. Uh, uh, and by this can be done in the sense not only on the commission part, but mostly on the strategies. So uh, is it only discounts or can we do something else? What can we do to be better together? They're becoming more flexible now. They're listening more because they got scared as well. The, uh, I was saying last week that one of the aggregators, without mentioning the name, they were very anxious because they had 20% less firing of their app for the first time since they started. So 20% less firing of the app, this means that people are not even interested to look at whether discounts or anything else. They're simply not firing the app as much. People on the lockdown at home, they will miss going back to socializing. They will miss going back to uh, the normal life. And this means that one of the first industries to kick back in once life goes back to normal would be the restaurant uh, industry, would be the logistics, transport, anything that's digital will go back faster to life because people will be craving that. There's a big chance that people will not be flying as much outside of the UAE during the summertime. So this should give us better uh, uh, times in the summer for our restaurant uh, in terms of operation, in terms of volumes. And last but not least, restaurant operators today are less, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, strict on how they want to share, how they want to work together, how they're open to new ideas. Before that, before COVID, people were very much strict on what to share from their data and what to share from their know-how, et cetera. Today, everybody is willing to interact and work together to make things better. Now, our solution to that is we either unite, and I think that's the objective of this community, that's the objective of this group, or we disappear. And trust me, the restaurateurs, if they disappear today, others will come tomorrow and they will start the whole thing again. So we have a chance today. It's either we become part of what I may call a tycoon, or you face the tide alone. You're, you're done, you're gone. No matter how deep your pockets are, you will not be able to survive what's happening now, because if it lasts for more than a month or two, all of us will face huge problems. You were mentioning earlier that some, what each one of us needs to do his cash flow for the next 12 months. How are you supposed to do the cash flow if you don't know how your sales are going to look like? What you say is, no matter what you do, if this COVID continues, you know, and comes back with a backlash and, you know, keeps us again home for three, four more months, well, then this would be a very, very tough situation for each one alone. But if we're all together, united somehow, under one flag, as I was saying last week, then and only then, we will have a chance to survive. Now, what does a tycoon mean for us? Well, a tycoon would mean for us that we create like a consortium. In this consortium, we have all homegrown brands. We all operate under one flag to survive 2020 and then to be profitable in 2021, if not better than 2019, at least like 2019. How will we do that? Now, we have a company as Wakira. This company is full-fledged. It's operating, it's already managing seven brands. We already have the infrastructure, whether it is uh, from an HQ standpoint, whether it's from a HACCP standpoint, CPU standpoint, restaurants, aggregator relationship, landlords, you name it. So we have everything. What we can do is we can start sharing this with the rest of the community through SLAs. This SLA would enable us as an entity to have bigger profits in 2022, thanks to the scale, because this is something that's sustainable. It's not only to fix a problem, which is COVID-19. No, it's sustainable to go forward and to move forward uh, beyond COVID-19. As a consortium, you become immediately a big player. And by a big player, people will listen to you. People as aggregators, as suppliers, as landlords, as, as anybody will just listen to you. Even legislators will listen to you because you become under one flag. And again, each one of us owns his own brand. Each one of us is responsible for his own cash flow. But at the end of the day, we have like one voice. We have one flag that is going to negotiate with the stakeholders for the benefit of everybody. The consortium will immediately allow people to save. It's not something that will help 
uh, restaurants to see saving after a year or two. No, it's immediate. And by immediate, I'm meaning in a matter of weeks, people will actually start seeing how much they can save on purchases, on the aggregators, on the CPU, on headquarters, et cetera, et cetera. We're already on ERP, so we can integrate even more brands with us on ERP. But most importantly, there is on the community, in the community, we have people who are more savvy than us in IT, where we can have applications that will help us you know, proceed and progress and become more efficient and more synergetic. Expanding the consortium to Saudi is what we were doing anyway before COVID-19. So we, before we uh, got hit, like everybody else who's, uh, with the pandemic, we had already identified six locations in Saudi Arabia to expand our business over there. Our shareholders are tycoons in Saudi. So if we go under one flag to Saudi, what will, we will benefit from, the rest of the consortium members will benefit from. And what I've done here is a simple uh, 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 simulation of a PNL of a restaurant, typical restaurant PNL versus in the consortium how it would look like, or if we unite how it would look like. And if you look at any PNL of a restaurant, the biggest chunks of the PNL are cogs on one hand, are the rents on the other hand, are the staff, and then the aggregators. These are the big chunks before EBITDA. That's what makes it or breaks it for a restaurant on a, a restaurant level, not on a corporate level. And where we can help is definitely on the cogs because we buy bigger, we buy more together under one flag. And we've just assumed that our average cogs goes from 28 to 26 points. Now, 28 is for an efficient restaurant. So if your restaurant today is making a cogs or is realizing cogs above 28, then it would be even easier for us to get you to the 28 and then the 26. If you're already at an efficient 28, getting you to 26 will come thanks to volume. Another thing is with the landlords. We've took a mix of high-end uh, uh, spots, mall spots, and secondary uh, street spots. And the average rent of 12% is a good, healthy average rent. I know a lot of companies, and because of what we've done in terms of acquiring businesses and the uh, screening that we've done of 200 plus companies, a lot of them have rentals around 15%. When you have it at 12, you're already efficient. And this is why I just brought it by only 1% down if we negotiate on the one flag. Imagine if this flag goes and negotiates with Miras or goes and negotiates with the Amar. Definitely, the prices that we get for all its members will be much better than the prices every individual member is getting alone. You look at staff, we did not touch it because this is a decision, whether it's staff, marketing, or utilities. These are three decisions that we do not want to get involved in. This is entirely the decision of the brand owner, the brand operator. You decide how many staff you want to put in your restaurant. You decide whether you need a PIC or a supervisor or a manager. You decide whether you need a head chef or an executive chef. That's up to you. And all of this is unchanged in both. And then comes the aggregators. We've taken an assumption that 35% of your sales are going through the aggregators. And this would mean that this would cost you 10% of your total business. Now, if we assume the same stays here, we can definitely bring this down by 20%. How is that? Because talking to other restaurants, I realized that Wakira itself already has better deals than most of the restaurants we spoke to. So imagine if we can have even more customers or even more restaurants joining the flag, how much can we actually bring that down? Because at the end, it's a volume game to all of us. So a bit the level, we can improve by five points. And this is only on the restaurant level. Now for bigger groups, those who have CPUs and who have headquarters cost Today, it's very, very unlikely that they're making any margin. They're today at a negative, whether it's from five to minus five to maybe minus 50, depending on your fixed cost and how it looks like. Um, we can do that by actually sharing our own headquarters and sharing our own CPU cost. So, and I will explain later how this can work. So in this simulation, our PNL could go for every restaurant from a typical negative PNL in the current times to a sustainable positive PNL because this has nothing to do with COVID-19. This is sustainable. It's to help us now, but to help us beyond. And just to clarify things and to uh, not to have any doubts in it, key attributes who would be part of this triple win that we can have. It's a win for the restaurant, it's a win for the stakeholders, and it's a win for Wakira as well. All will win. First, it's any restaurant 
growing and profitable in 2019 on a store level would be a perfect candidate for that. Because this means that this is a restaurant who's seen good days. This is a restaurant who was living happily before COVID-19 and now it got smashed because of COVID-19. So it's easier to bring it back to uh, profitable levels than a restaurant that's not making money at all. Highly involved managing owners. Now, if owners are involved in the managing, they will understand the value that one flag would bring to them because they will see how their pocket would be impacted immediately. The difference between owners and employees is when employees get stuck, owners have to step in and save the day. Well, we're talking about owners involved managed stores. High AUV restaurants and chains, high is very relative. It depends on what kind of restaurant. If we're talking about a high-end restaurant, a casual dining or a QSR, but at the end of the day, it has to be a healthy uh, AUV, healthy sales uh, restaurant. And then a restaurant that's compatible and willing to stay in business, not only for COVID, but beyond that. So somebody looking at short and mid-term as well. We do not, we're not talking about acquiring anybody or anybody acquiring us. There's no money involved in this. There is no share swap at all. There is a full control of the brand and the restaurant remains with the owner. We become like an Uber or Wakira becomes like an Uber. You select the, the, the services that you want to uh, utilize. You manage your own, sir, your own restaurants. Unless you want Wakira to manage it for you, that's a different story. But in principle, you manage your own restaurants and each brand has its own identity and keeps its own competitiveness. We compete against each other after we remove the unnecessary fat. We compete on marketing, we compete on branding, we compete on service, we compete on speed, we compete on innovation, on menus, we compete on even you know the identity itself of the brand, on geography, where would you put that brand geographically uh, uh, and, and, and whether you want to expand it to other countries or not, we compete on all of that. But there's no point in competing in being beaten by the aggregators or you know forced to do discounts that are not necessary or forced to uh, uh, pay exorbitant rents uh, in, uh, in malls, et cetera, et cetera. We can take this unnecessary fat out of the ecosystem and compete on the things that matter. If we consolidate our cost together to reach you know, one, one uh, CPU, one central warehouse, one call center, no matter how big it is, but it's only one, in this case, the whole cost will be split among the rest, so the cost will go down. The same will be in streamlining the organizations. Why do we need to have payroll in every single organization? Why can't we just streamline it and have it digital? One, one entity will manage it to all of us. Uh, why do we need to have uh, uh, the same for uh, uh, finance, accounting? Why do we need to have the same for everything related to admin? We can have, uh, somebody was mentioning earlier, the PRO. Why does each one of us need to have his own PRO? Why can't we have PROs that are actually working for all of us? Why can't we have admin doing the same work for all of us? The uh, synergies, whether it's uh, on buying together or central processing unit, uh, are very important. And we can actually, and this was an idea that uh, Leo was discussing with me earlier, we can become you know, sort of Ubering our uh, own delivery bikes and third party bikes. So whenever, uh, we have an order uh, uh, to, to send, we look which rider is closest to the restaurant in hand, and then this rider will go to it. Whether this rider comes from a Ghibli or comes from a QuickUp or even comes from a different restaurant that's next to you, well, the rider is closer, he will go there, and this is how you know, we, we become more efficient. Um, introducing our brands into each other location is another idea. Why do we have to go to a dark kitchen operator only in order for our brands to expand. Well, I may have a big restaurant in Javza, for, example, for instance, and you don't have uh, any location in Javza, and you're interested to go and try as a dark kitchen in Javza, well, please be my guest. Come into my restaurant as well and operate as a dark kitchen and sell from there. If you find that it's, it, it justifies having your own restaurant, good for you, go open your own restaurant. At the end of the day, during the time you would be operating from my restaurant, both of us will benefit, both of us will gain. To, to cut a long story short, we have to survive 2020 and become even much stronger in 2021 20, uh, and beyond. This is just like uh, uh, um, a menu of what can be done, and that's my final slide, what can be done as a, a scope for the management company, for Wakira. Well, Wakira can do everything, starting from the CPU full service. So we act as your CPU, and we're already doing that for our own brands 
and we were doing it before COVID-19 for other companies as well. So we can become your CPU from buying for you, cooking for you, uh, even developing the menus with you, everything. It's a full-fledged HACCP certified CPU, 12,000 square feet in Dubai, and it's managed by a, a very strong executive chef who's got 25 years of experience behind him, assisted by his own team. And the good thing about it, you're not going to pay the fixed cost of these people. You're only going to pay the valuable part. The flexible office space, we have a big office. Uh, we actually have two, one in Garhut and the other one in uh, the IFC. Um, you need an office space, you need a, a meeting room. Well, you can book it and uh, you can use it. Uh, of course, it has to be booked in advance. Supply chain, full service, central buying. Again, central buying is something that I think is a quick win and immediate win, whether it's on prices or on payment terms. HR services, payroll, admin, recruitment, we're doing it anyway, so we, can, we may as well do it for you. Uh, managing the aggregators is another big thing, not only for the commissions, but for the discounts as well. Again, call center, full service, landlords management, delivery management, you name it. With all of uh, uh, what's listed on the page, these are all things that we can immediately do. And of course, we can expand together uh, to Saudi Arabia uh, when the time is right. Of course, not immediately, but within the next maybe six months or so. Expanding in Saudi Arabia, whether it's for a full dine-in uh, restaurant or for a uh, dog kitchen. So one of us, uh, for instance, uh, 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 a brand X would go and do a big dining restaurant over there, and four brands from Dubai will go and operate from the same kitchen as dark kitchens. So everybody benefits there. Uh, they will pay part of the uh, rent, they will pay part of the utilities, they, everybody will gain. And our friend going there as a dine-in is not going to take all the burden by himself from day one. No, it will be shared with the rest, so everybody gains up to that. But we need this structure, this management company, this one flag uh, with SLAs that will actually enable all of us to uh, interact in a legal form, uh, in a very business-oriented form, and flexible form. You have the right you know, to get into that company uh, or you know, through an SLA. You can stay there for three months to try it. If you like it, then you have to stay for two years. If you don't like it during the three months, please pull out. There's no, no harm done. Why do you have to stay for two years if you like it and, and you need to stay? Because we need this volume to continue you know, with the aggregators and to continue with the suppliers to get the deals that we have already committed to. But if everybody you know, starts withdrawing, we will not have that volume anymore. So for the first few months, you know, month, two, three months even, try it, no problem with that. You like it, we uh, uh, formalize it in a different fashion, move forward and, and get it done with. Now, the last point is, how would Wakira be remunerated for that? Well, simple. We want it to be a, a performance-based uh, remuneration. Whatever you save as a restaurant versus your own p &L of December 2019, you keep two-thirds of it, and one-third, or 35% will go to Wakira. That's, that's how it is. So if Wakira does not help you save on your COGS, if it does not help you save on your aggregators commission, Save on your discounts, save on your payroll, save payroll, I mean services, save on your uh, landlords, you know. Whatever we save, you take two thirds and 35% will go to uh, Wakira. And then we uh, were discussing together with uh, other members of the community that you can actually have packages uh, designed and each one could actually go and select the package you want. Maybe somebody would be interested in all of these uh, services. This will have a cost. Somebody else will say, no, 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 I'm only interested in the buying. Yeah. So it will be a different package. And we have to bear in mind the PL that I was sharing earlier, because that's literally the make it or break it. This is how we will all benefit from it, at least from a PL standpoint. And we'll all also benefit from it by being stronger, having better cash, efficiently managed to spend it where we need to spend it, which is delighting our customers, which is getting our brand growing and not just to paying it to uh, exhaustive cost, whether with the aggregators, discounts, or with the landlords. So this sums it up. And I will close by saying, we will need for this to be activated and to be able to answer the questions, uh, uh, because lots of questions will be there. We will just need five, five restaurants to start testing this with us. Being very flexible, very open, very transparent. Let's have five restaurants testing this with us for a month, and during this time, 
we will work out um, how we can enhance our SLA, how we can enhance our service level, how we can enhance our interface with the, with the suppliers, with the aggregators, etc. Just by having five people volunteer for that. Now, the more the merrier. If, if we have more than five, that's, that's even great. But starting with only five or more would help us go to the suppliers and say, you know what, this is the situation today. That's what we need to do. And we are representing these five uh, brands to do X, Y, and Z. That's, that's what I wanted to say, and I look forward to hearing your questions and to knowing more on who would like to be part of this journey. There are lots of questions here. How, uh, do you want me to answer the questions one by one, uh, 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 Leo? Yeah, I think yes, let's go for questions first. Okay, so um, where does it start? Uh, Maybe if anybody wants to talk by voice, just raise hand. Yep. Yeah, yeah, because the questions are far too many, so I don't know where to start, actually. Mm -hmm. Ashraf, you, are, you can talk now. Yeah, hi, uh, hi, Nader. hi, everybody. Uh, I, be I believe you spoke uh, pretty well, and uh, uh, big up to uh, Akshay as well, who started initially, and Leo, especially for all this, uh, you know, the consortium that's already there. Um, well done, everybody, and I hope everybody's staying safe in COVID situation. Well, uh, I'll make it very short. I don't have too many questions. My first question was I'm based from Abu Dhabi. Are you uh, having any operations in Abu Dhabi regarding your dark kitchen, uh, or you don't? You're mainly Dubai-based. For the time being, we're only Dubai-based. We have um, a partner in, in Abu Dhabi. So if, if we get in touch, maybe I can help. Uh, a partner, I mean a CPU, uh, a big center kitchen. All right, all right. We, we worked together before. But personally, as Wakira, no, we are only in, the, in Dubai for the time being. Yeah, because I, I have a CPU myself, but then uh, we have brands which we wanted to expand into uh, other Emirates and all that. So I was thinking in that way, um, maybe out of this meeting, we can possibly discuss some you know, operations in, in Absolutely, Dubai. absolutely, absolutely, with pleasure. Um, if, if you want, I can share my phone number with, uh, with everybody hearing us now. It's yeah. uh, zero 05. Six okay. six, another All six right. six, four eight eight one. All right, so that's four sixes, four five. Uh, yes, double six, double six, four double eight one. Is that right? Yes, absolutely. And I'm just right. putting it here. Uh, four eight eight one. Yeah. I go. had some. I had some other questions on the bid uh, and all that, but you know, I don't want to. I don't want to make a discussion over here. Uh, my only point is that, other than that, um, uh, have a good start and happy Ramadan. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Same to you. Right. Same to you. Same to you. Thanks for yes, your question. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay. Um, okay. Anybody else? And my, maybe even uh, we can start right now, like open microphone as well. Just, uh, I think it will be easier. So oh, if anybody wants to talk, just raise a hand. I will, I will allow. Uh, the question was about Tikkun or Tifun? <laughs> tikkun? Yeah, no, Tikkun. Magnat, something like that. Yeah, tikkun, it's a, it's a, it, it means we have to be big. We cannot be taken uh, advantage of by being individual and small. No matter how big you are, you're, you're still alone. But when we team up, when we unite, we, we are looked at as a tycoon, as big guys. Okay, is there uh, anybody who who willing to, to join this first five uh, pilot uh, pilot projects uh, to, te to test on, on, on herself the idea? Uh, hi, uh, Leo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look, uh, Nader, thanks a lot. I thought that was very useful, and uh, thanks Thank for taking the time to prepare those very informative slides. Thank you. Uh, look, I, I messaged you privately anyway, but uh, and now I've got your number. I'd be interested to see how we can, you know, collaborate. I certainly agree with you wholeheartedly that coming together as a collective gives us more strength 
in these extremely challenging times. So let's have a separate conversation to see how we can, you know, work together and see how we can pull this all together. So I'll reach sure. out to you on that. That's, that's great. Thank you. Okay, good. Uh, Kunal, you are, you can talk now, right now. Hi, Nader. Uh, this is Hello. Uh, great. Um, I actually proposed this the first time I joined the group. I was actually telling them we need to negotiate with landlords together. We need to negotiate with aggregators together. We right. need to have certain central team that represents the body and then, you know, uh, negotiate with the suppliers, payment terms, etc. Very similar concept uh, uh, that you're sharing. Uh, which right. by me when I did the group. So yes, I would be interested. I'm actually currently using a, cent a central production unit for our brands. We have six outlets uh, uh, by the name of Pret to Go. It's a grab and go healthy. We do a lot of caterings, etc. So mm -hmm. we're using a central production kitchen. So I, I wouldn't mind uh, starting immediately to try out your central production kitchen and some of the other value add services. I'm in for this trial. So maybe we connect Absolutely. offline and we 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 discuss uh, Absolutely. Uh, all, uh, tomorrow. And yeah, uh, sure. Sure, sure. Thank you for your interest. Yeah, okay. Uh, Dorsey H. I want to watch something. Hello? Dorsey H, you can talk right now. Hello, здравствуйте. Uh -huh, hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. Uh, my name is Jalil. I'm from Sharjah. Unfortunately, I came to this meeting in the middle of the meeting. So, uh, but I heard there is some interesting information about uh, like kitchen and collaboration together. Uh, so uh, I'll be uh, more than happy to speak about it again and uh, to, to try uh, this kind of question. Good. Do, did you note my number, Jalil? Uh, fortunately not, because I was trying to find it. And, uh, Zero five. Just a minute. Okay, zero five. Six, six. Double six. Again, double six. Okay. Four, eight, eight, one. Eight, eight, one. Your name? Nader Bassett. Nice to meet you, Mr. Nader. My name is Jalil. Yeah. Nice to meet you, Jalil. So, anybody, anybody else wants to go? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, problems with phone numbers. And <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Martin. Yeah. By, by the way, while uh, people are thinking, I will launch the polling about community meetings uh, date and times. Please vote for, for more convenient time. Maybe because maybe Sunday 5 is not the best way. So just, just have a look at the survey. Uh, so, and uh, if uh, you have any questions or want to tell us anything uh, not, not related even this topic, so you can just raise your hand, uh, we will uh, put you to online. Yeah, uh, okay. So, George, what, what do you think about uh, this uh, Nadir's offer? Uh, I think it is pretty interesting as an offer. I mean, now that I had uh, questions to ask you as well, I think one of the uh, criteria for choosing a restaurant to tie up with you, you mentioned uh, it needs to be profitable. Um, so, one of the reasons why we want to possibly link up with uh, with with such a setup is to in order to become profitable would would a business that is probably a year old not started making money would would it be an interesting proposition for you to look at let's let's talk uh, because it depends how deep uh, in the red the restaurant is there are restaurants that are you know in the single digit deep uh, in red they they're savable especially if they're one year old but some other restaurants we've seen and we've come across where the restaurant itself on, on a unit level is at minus 20, 25 percent. And this, this is very, this means that there is something structurally wrong, uh, whether with the concept or with the way it's managed. So uh, if you don't mind, uh, please give me a call. Let's have a chat. Uh, let's look at the numbers together. 
And uh, if I see that there is a way that we can help you do it, we'll definitely be more than happy to do that. Super. Thank you. Thanks, Nando. You're welcome. Anytime. Yeah, okay. So it seems you have five brands to start with. Uh, so you can test this idea and then uh, yeah. try with other. Is it work uh, or, or not? Sure. That, that, that's a good way to start. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So uh, uh, let's uh, let's uh, let's try to summarize today today today's meeting and uh, and end it. Uh, so uh, I hope today we received some information about how how is better to start the reopenings and, and and the things which we need to think about during this time. We had a very good uh, speech uh, from Akshay about legal things, responsibility, and so on. I think it's very important to take it in mind, especially in Dubai, because for most of us, Dubai is not parent home, so <laughs> maybe some, some things are not obvious or different than in our parent countries. Uh, thank you very much, George, for uh, switching off the discounts idea. Uh, thank you very much, Almas, for being with us and taking part in execution of, of all these tasks. So, Nadir, I think, uh, also... <coughs> some of his experience and a very good presentation. We will, we will collect this presentation from him and send you uh, with, with meeting record as well.